-hmm. At this point, we're gonna do a ton of lotion and get this re-moisturized because it just, it tends to get really, really dry in the beginning. I woke up one day and like my, my scrotum was swole and I'm, I'm saying, thinking to myself, like maybe I smashed them or something, like for getting in and out the chair. I'm paralyzed in the wheelchair, yeah, so I, nec I wouldn't necessarily notice, and I'm in and out my chair all the time. And I, that night, I couldn't go to sleep because I was painting, I was tossing and turning. It kept hurting, so 7 to 7 in the morning, I got up, I could, but I wouldn't even sleep. I just called my cousin and told him to come get me and take me to the hospital. They said I had a flesh eating disease, and then soon I got here, I was in surgery. They was cutting flesh, yeah, they was cutting flesh off of that, so I never looked at it, but they said this right here was open, like my wound was open. He had a bad infection of the soft tissues of his trunk, um, and so by the time I saw him, our acute care surgery team had already done a really good job of getting control of his infection, and he had sort of stabilized um, clinically and was and was doing well, but he had a really large wound that we had to deal with. It was such a big area that I didn't want to jump right to using his own skin grafts because you wanna make sure that when you use the patient's own skin that it's really gonna work um, and you don't waste any of it. So um, for him, I decided to use um, the fish skin graft as sort of a temporizing, um, get accelerate the healing a little bit, um, make sure the skin graft's gonna work, and so we, we stage it and make sure the wound's really clean and then use the temporizing um, fish skin graft to get the wound ready a little bit. The fish skin graft, it's called Kerasis, um, they requ it requires minimal processing um, because there's no risk of viral transfer um, from, from this kind of fish's skin to humans. It's cod from Iceland. It has a similar structure to human skin um, with um, sort of the matrix of what it's made up of. So it, we put it on as kind of a temporary thing. The kind of recommended amount of time that it stays on there is about a week. And then when I took him back to surgery about a week later, it had incorporated pretty well. And um, so then we took out all the sutures and staples, any extra skin graft, fish skin graft that hadn't worked, and then, which most of it had. And they put my regular skin on top of, from my thighs. I was really, really pleased with how he did, and I, I think um, we had a lot of help from our wound team and from our nutrition team and the ICU teams. These are donor sites. This was where his skin was taken and meshed, and this is his own skin from his thigh, and it's all what we call re-epithelialized. The fish skin worked really well for him, and the, his ultimately his skin graft worked well for him, but I, I think it um, also depends on all the the other people taking care of him too. Aquaman, Merman, Miracle Man, yeah, yeah, we was just laughing, coming up with stuff. So for me to be not even a month and a half later, up, moving around and about to go home, that's crazy to me.